is like uh, conventional Wi-Fi, but it goes 10 times as far. So we could cover the whole conference with one access point instead of needing hundreds. Hello, IPXers. We are here at Morse Marcos booth and Embedded World 2025. We're going to talk to Andy. So, Andy, first of all, tell us about Morse Micro. Tell us about what you do. And then, once you've done that, tell us about what you'd like to talk about. All right, absolutely. So, Morse Micro is an Australian fabulous semiconductor company. Uh, we were founded in 2016 and we make uh, Wi-Fi Halo chips. The Wi-Fi Halo is like uh, conventional Wi-Fi, but it goes 10 times as far. So it covers 100 times the area. Uh, so it's like conventional Wi-Fi and there's IP connectivity, same sort of local area network, but far, far greater reach. Right. So when you, when, when you designed that chip, when you decided this is the world needs much, much greater range with Wi-Fi. What drove that? What drove that initiation for you in terms of... So, so what I think the question I'm asking, what applications made you say, we need much greater range for Wi-Fi for the, for, the read, for the readers? No one's reading this, they're watching it. So the watchers, what do they... When, when, you, when you designed that chip, when you said the world needs much, much longer range Wi-Fi, where do you see that? Where do you see the need for that? So they understand the, the context of what they should yeah. be looking at. Yeah, absolutely. So um, before founding Morse Micro, my co-founder and I worked at Broadcom. We were working on the chips that went into iPhones and to the high-end uh, products. And what we saw is those chips, those same chips, were getting repurposed for IoT and they're just not suitable for IoT at all. Right. They don't right. have the reach, they're high power consumption. The square shape, expensive. round hole scenario. Yeah. Um, so we saw like Wi-Fi Halo coming and realized that Wi-Fi Halo is the correct solution for all these IoT applications because it gives that robust connectivity at range. It gives a robust connectivity on the outside of your house, not just on the inside of your house. Uh, it can give uh, robust connectivity across massive sites like st st retail stores, yep. warehouses, conference centers like this. Like we could cover the whole conference with one access point instead of needing hundreds. Right, right. That's completely different to anything else that anybody would be doing with a Wi-Fi chip. Okay, yeah. good. So, what would you like to talk about today? So, um, we've recently announced our second generation product, which is the MM8108. Um, so that's um, got a whole lot of advances compared to our first generation product. It's faster, uh, it's lower power, it's got USB interface, uh, generally, you know, a, a step up. But in particular, um, one aspect of it that I'm particularly proud of is the transmitter. Um, so the transmitter in a Wi-Fi chip typically is the highest consumer of power. Yes. Right? Um, and that causes some severe limitations in that the the battery for battery powered devices, the battery needs to be quite large in order to support that yep. uh, peak, yep. peak power. It also is a significant drain on the battery, so it you know, wears down the battery fast, the battery uh, runs out quickly. So my knowledge might be out of date here, so just forgive me, but when I've been talking about IoT devices, when I've been talking about when, when uh, it, where, where most of the power gets used, I've heard figures, so you're, you're probably going to have to correct me, but might be beyond 70 and 90% of the power is just doing the transmitting yeah. bit. Yeah, that sounds right. It depends on the application. But certainly in sensor applications, in but my point video is, applications. If you can lower the amount of yeah. power of the transmitter, you are, yeah, it doesn't matter what else. Massive difference. It doesn't matter what else you're yeah. doing. However clever you're being elsewhere, you're not going to even put a hole in the power yeah. use if you don't drive the power down. On the transmitter. On the yeah. transmitter. So yeah. this is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's far more, uh, it takes far more power to like, broadcast your signal than it does to listen to one. Yes. So uh, yeah. that's a fundamental uh, problem. Um, and so in terms of transmitter power efficiency, like state of the art, where the industry has been for well decades now, is uh, around about 10% uh, chip efficiency. Um, and if we look in here, you can see like some of the, uh, the best chips from other companies are sitting between 6% and 11% is the very best uh, that the industry's come up with to date. Um, and what we've done at Morse Micro with this chip is instead of using a conventional de design approach, 
Uh, we've gone back to basics and, and come up with a completely novel approach. Um, and the result of that is that we blow all of these uh, competitive so numbers mean, out these of are water. Standard, these are standard stats. Anyone can go and look these up yeah. on, the, on so, the internet machine. Here we go. How exciting. Show them the figures. So uh, state of the art to date with uh, the competitive companies between 6 and 11% transmit efficiency and then Morse Micro's uh, transmitter is 37% efficient. So major uh, step up, a major change. That's huge. Yeah. But stats are stats. So what does that actually mean in real life? So this being four times as efficient as the, another chip that you might be using means that the battery uh, will last four times as long. It is literally, that, that, yeah. that is what that yeah. does. So because obviously stats can be stats. Yeah. That does actually mean that my battery will last four times longer yeah. in my system. So either four times as long or uh, if you need to reach further, like you can operate at twice the distance. Right, that's what that, that's what that figure, yeah. that's, that's real time, real life, game changing. Because yeah. we can look at yeah. graphs. I look at graphs all the time, yeah. but they don't necessarily mean something. But you're saying four times longer battery life yeah. or twice as far. And who, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to be changing their battery as well, uh, uh, 25% as often? We, we spend our whole lives talking on IP exchange to the para, the, the PMIC people, people in energy harvesting. Yeah. This is a, you know, an issue where everybody's trying to understand how you make very small incremental saving uh, on yeah. power because nobody wants to be changing batteries yeah. because that's people wandering around. But um, even with all of those clever things they're doing, is what I've just said, if the transmitter's using four, yeah. four times, <laughs> don't matter how, how clever you are yeah. with all the other stuff. That's right. Four yeah. times as long or twice as far. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So how does a how does a design engineer today go and evaluate that? What what's what's the process by which they can because those are big statements. Those are big statements. So they need to be able to understand how they do that. Is there an evaluation kit? How do they do that? Um, yeah, we've got a range of evaluation kits, um, such as the one on, on the wall there. And actually, you can see. Um, that that board there is set up. Uh, we'll take a photo of that specifically, so that it's very easy to do uh, power consumption measurements. On the left there, where it says current measurement, uh, those are jumpers where an engineer can put on a current meter and see the, what, what the power consumption of the uh, of the chip is. Right. When they plug that in, is there some sort of interface that enables them to? What, what happens when they plug that in? Does that intuitively understand the power output? Does it intuitively understand how much further you're going to be able to... So you mentioned four, four times the amount of power or twice the distance. How does that... How do they do... How do they find that out from that evaluation board? So you get that evaluation board, you get a access point such as the one over there, also yep. available from our distributors. Uh, set up a Wi-Fi Halo network, uh, super easy, um, and then just get an army tour on that. That's it. <laughs> Good. It is easy. Fantastic. But uh, Andy, thank you very much. Thank you.